Yes. Absolutely. How a fast transition? It is. I'm excited about the opportunity. You know, Coach Mullen uh, put a lot of faith in me, and I'm just excited with the guys we've got returning to, you know, hopefully make an impact and continue the success we've had. I know you guys can't talk about the recent hire. We can't talk about David Turner, but how do you how do you feel about how they'll fit in with with your system and everything you're wanting sure. to run here uh, at 13? A bunch of great guys. You know, Coach Mullen and I talked to a bunch of guys at the uh, coaches' convention over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, David Turner comes highly recommended, uh, well-respected around the SEC, around the country, and uh, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, a lot of technique, uh, a lot of good X's and O's guy, and uh, we're just excited about him being a part of the program. Aggressiveness can be an overused word by guys like me about defense. But sure. Coach Mullen mentioned that and blitzes and everything. Right. I'm sure we're going to expect uh, maybe a little bit of a different feel with the defense well, this year. Just the, the one stat that, that, you know, it's not talked about a lot, but one that I've been, you know, talking to some guys about is a stat called defensive mayhem. And it's just talking about tackles for loss, sacks, PBUs, uh, interceptions. And, uh, you know, that stat, uh, I think, you know, hopefully we'll see a, a great improvement. Uh, aggressiveness, defensive mayhem, uh, guys flying around, making plays, and creating negative plays on the offensive side. Did you ever go back and look at anything Manny Diaz did? I know he was kind of known for things. I got you. Yeah, and Manny and I are close. And I said, you know, when I first got here, you know, Manny and I, the transition was going to be smooth because, you know, we had been doing some of the same things and similar concepts. I um, actually talked to him today and, uh, you know, just bouncing ideas off each other because, you know, they want to improve on defense, we want to improve on defense. And uh, just the aggressiveness, the mentality, and, uh, you know, those kind of things, the mindset uh, going into the spring ball and going into the off season that we're going to bring. How do you feel uh, upon further reflection about your, I guess, your test run in Jacksonville? I guess, well, it's been such a, you know, it's been a whirlwind ever since, you know, that day. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of recruiting, and so I haven't had a lot of time to reflect on, uh, you know, how everything went. But, you know, especially when you look back at the first half of that game, uh, it was very clean. Uh, guys were flying around, making plays, creating turnovers, tackles for loss. Uh, you know, for the most part in the first half, stone in the run game. And uh, that's a big priority for me. Uh, and David Turner, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, establishing a great run defense. Yep. If you can play great run defense, create negative downs on first and second down, get them into third and long situations, defensively you're going to have a pretty good day. Uh, how do you feel about the pass rush next year with Nico coming back, Preston Smith with the promising, and now you got David Turner to develop these guys. Right. And, you know, what do you know about his ability and then, to develop? And then also you've got, you know, Ryan Brown who had a good game in the bowl game, a uh, big long kid. Uh, P.J. Jones on the inside generates a lot of pass rush. Uh, Caleb Ewells and the roles that we use him in, uh, I think are going to be, you know, really complementary to each other. And uh, you got the two young guns. You got Nick and Quay uh, coming in the middle. You know, they're a mismatch for some, you know, certain guards or centers. Uh, so just, you know, with Coach Turner's experience, uh, his ability to generate pass rush from a defensive line, and the, the kids we have coming back, we're all excited about it. How uncomfortable was this week for you? you have to marry your, your personnel and your coaching staff with their personalities and their philosophy with what you want to do. Is it just kind of a whirlwind in trying to put all those pieces together? Was that frustrating for you, or how did you approach that? Uh, I mean, it was, a, it was a great learning experience for me. Uh, you know, Coach Mullen and I working very closely together, talking to the guys. And I just, you know, the, the thing that I learned a lot from Coach Mullen in the last, you know, week or so is it's not necessarily the exact hire that you get but the compliment to the entire coaching staff. And I was very impressed with how a coach handled, you know, we're not making one hire at this position and one hire at this position. We're making two hires. And with those two hires, what's the best fit? You know, Coach A might be a best fit for this. Coach B might be a better fit for this. But the combination of the two, I was just really impressed. And it was a great learning experience for me going through that with Coach Mullen and, you know, how to hire two guys instead of, one guy for this position and one guy for this position. It was kind of a complimentary hire with me and Coach Hughes. What is the best fit for you know, the entire coaching staff? You look back at that Gator Bowl, what worked for you, what didn't it? What, what do you feel like you got to improve on, what you feel feel pretty good about sure. as well, a coordinator calling the, the biggest thing is, um, you know, we let our guys get our feet their feet set. At times this season we've played the spread, no huddle teeth offenses. A lot of times our feet weren't set. You know, we were kind of in a panic, we were kind of in a rush. The biggest thing that we tried to do as a staff was get our guys' feet set, get them lined up, see the formation, recognize what they're going to do out of it, and just play. 
if they made an adjustment, they made a check, we would do the same thing. And I thought that was one of the biggest things that we did, and the guys flew around, ran to the ball, and, you know, made a lot of plays. You guys good? What did you, I mean, you haven't called plays, I guess, like in a couple of years, but at FIU, that, that first year you got there, uh, everything kind of improved, I guess, uh, when you look at it on paper. Do you set any type of goals going into this year when you're going, hey, we're this this year, but I want to go up this much or whatever? Uh, one of the biggest things that I think Coach Mullen and I talked about this over the last couple of years is, you know, I was a defense coordinator at Albright College. I was 24 years old, okay? First time defense coordinator. I thought I had all the answers at 24 years old. You know, learned that. I didn't. Um, but I was a coordinator for two years. Then you remove yourself for three years, and you're kind of an assistant coach. I went back and I was a defensive coordinator for the next four years. Very successful at the one double A level. I had a lot of great defenses. Then you take a step back for two years. You're off the field, you know, two more years, and then you go to FIU. So the, the neat thing is you go from being a coordinator to being an assistant. Go to being a coordinator, being an assistant. The, the learning curve, I think, when you step back for a year or two, you actually learn a lot more because you know how you've done it. Okay, now I'm going to learn a little bit. Take a little breather, if so. And then you go back to being important. I think just that transition uh, has been really beneficial to my career, and I think it will be continuing to be the same. Having done the co-coordinator thing here for two years, sure. what, I guess when you close the book on that now, what were your thoughts on that? Does, does that work in, my, in today's college football, and then do you feel like it worked here? I, I think it was a great situation. You know, the biggest thing with us, with, with us is, and I said this after the bowl game, is the guys that we had in the room with us, the defensive coaches, we were such a tight-knit unit. We cared for each other. We loved each other. We coached hard together. So I wouldn't trade the two years with those three other men for anything. Great experience, great guys. I learned a lot. And I look forward to you know, continuing uh, to have a great defense here with some state. Just college football now, even this is point where you're just going to see best of the two things, either a lineup of power up against like Valley or this tempo spread all or nothing. It, it seems like it's continuing that trend, and the, you know the things that some teams are doing is they'll show you a little bit of the no huddle, fast tempo. They'll slow it down a little bit. They'll speed it up a little bit, and that's what Northwestern did in the bowl game. I think I thought they did a good job with how they run their offense, but I think that's a correct statement. Has there been any talk with Coach Bayless or anybody that we need to probably change what we do conditioning wise, or, or what we do in the offseason to get ready for no just no huddle, tempo, all these things? I mean, Body right. Uh, the big thing is just the off-season conditioning. I've got full faith in Matt Bayless and his coach staff. They do a great job, and uh, I think we'll see improvements next year.